how's it going? I'm here today and just wanted to pop on here, you guys. This is Mon I'm Monica Abbott, um, two-time Olympian, played professional softball for, gosh, it seems like forever, 14, 16 years, uh, 16 years professionally in, um, in the U.S. and in Japan. And I am now just an advocate for the sport, an educator, all the things. And I thought, how cool would it be to have a conversation with an, a former teammate of mine about some of the hot topics in the sport? Uh, Tosh, why don't you introduce yourself? Oh, yeah. Well, thanks. Come on. This is fun. Um, Natasha Watley, two-time Olympian and UCLA alum, grad, played professionally um, here in the States. And then um, I'm sure what we'll get into, but you and I played mm -hmm. eight years together in Japan and, you know, what we were kind of discussing before, like some of the best years of our lives, right? Mm -hmm. um, but I think more than anything, I think what's so fun about this is like, we usually have these conversations when we're just talking you and I, so it's like, yes. oh, for them. So this is fun. This will be a good time. Yeah, exactly. I feel like we have so many amazing conversations and about the sport and all of us do, right? All of us women, uh, former professionals, former Olympians, people that maybe are no longer lacing up their cleats, but still really invested in the sport. We have these conversations about the state of softball worldwide nationwide and in the and it's like gosh we need to get these out in public so this is was just laid on my heart and it's like let's record it and see what happens yeah. so everybody la 2028 softball's back in the olympics announced about what is it now maybe a week and a half ago two maybe. weeks ago um yeah so this is the, where, are you going to make your big announcement that you're coming out of retirement? Oh gosh, no, no, no. I did oh. talk to Danielle Laurie for a minute. I told her you should play, go for team Canada. <laughs> yeah. Like you got this, <laughs> but yeah, I'm, I'm not announcing that. Oh, okay. I thought that like you were secretly like, let's do this little like chat and I'm going to make my announcement. <laughs> <laughs> I was no. ready for it. If you come out of retirement, I'll, I'll come with you. <laughs> okay. <Yeah. well. laughs> <laughs> don't wish for that because yeah that's not happening so. yeah <laughs> so LA 2028 obviously five I think five sports got um voted back in but really awesome I think because of almost the delay from the Tokyo games there's not as big of a a gap right between mm -hmm. Olympic yeah. year which is I think pretty cool especially mm -hmm. for these college athletes right now and and I would say more like our younger pros Mm -hmm. yeah well I would love to hear what you think I mean I when I heard the announcement obviously super excited I, I think yeah like I immediately went to who can play on that team and obviously I got excited and then I got sad again because it's like okay it's only 18 girls that mm -hmm. are going to get that opportunity who is that? It's probably like you said, young pros or late junior seniors, possibly in college right now. Right. Um, and then I got, like I said, I got excited. Then I got sad again because I'm like, okay, well we need to have, how can we keep softball in the Olympics outside of just the host country? Thank goodness for Tokyo. Thank goodness for Los Angeles. But like outside of that, like oh. we're not doing our, our job of keeping our game in the sport where it belongs. Right. Right, right. You know, I kind of thought the same thing. Like, I, my immediate thought was, and granted, like, I was the youngest player in 08, the oldest player in 2020. I mean, I got lucky in the Tokyo Games to be able to play in that um, at my age um, for as long as I'd been playing. But I think, you know, my immediate thought went to, like, who are the people that could actually end up still on the team that are on the team right now? And who are the people that could potentially be good? Like, what? what ages do we want to see play? Because a lot of times we think about like, oh, softball players are in their prime. You know, we know this as pros. You're more in your prime in that, would you say 28, 28 to 31? Yeah. yeah. Yes. Yeah. Mm -hmm. But in our sport, and especially in the US, you know, a lot of these college girls are playing at some of the highest level that they'll play at. Um, and they're at, you know, Mm -hmm. 20 to 22 right. so um it'll be interesting to see 
it'll be interesting to see it, that mix of college, current college athletes being able to compete on the Olympic stage with mm-hmm. potentially some pros, some young right. pros. Right. Right. Yeah. No, I mean, it's, it'll be exciting. I mean, it's, for whatever it's worth, it's all a positive thing. Like we, our game is exactly where it should be. Mm-hmm. Um, but I think the deeper conversation is like, there's still work to be done in the sense of how can we keep our game on that stage? Because it's, it's, it sh- it's where it, sh- it should be. And, you know, is that for, you know, if we still not considered a, a worldly sport, like what are those steps? I mean, like, is it even possible for us to get softball back yeah. in the Olympics? as an official sport, not getting voted in by the host country. Right. And that it really begs the question because LA 2028 is, um, we're in there, but then after the next games after LA is Brisbane and Australia mm-hmm. and Australia, you know, that's a program that has been Australian softball is a program that's kind of struggled with funding at times. It's a program that's kind of you know, had some scares if they're actually going to be able to have a team. Um, Mm -hmm. And we need them to, Mm -hmm. to be supported so that we have a chance to be in the Brisbane games following the LA. Yeah. Yeah. And it, yeah, I just, it makes me sad and upset like that. That's what we have to bank it off of, of hoping (laughs) that we're getting by that host country, you know, But I mean, with the rate that we're going, you know, we do, things are in our, on our favor, you know, like Australia is a softball playing country. Yeah. Obviously maybe in the last couple of years, funding hasn't been there, but you talk about Tokyo, Los Angeles, like Australia, like those are softball, baseball hotspots. And like, that is proof that, you know, our game should be in the, you know, our game should be in the Olympics and that countries want that sport there you know obviously like that's only a couple (laughs) but I I I think that that's you know obviously what you and I are both doing in in terms of being on the ground and grassroots and like trying to make our game a more international flair game and just trying to get that game in front of as many girls as possible because we know that that's what's what's needed to be done right yeah definitely I think uh participation right participation and getting more people playing the game, but also staying in the game. Because once, you know, if you have a memorable experience in the game, your chances of going to help another country, to coach, to be involved in the the business of sport somehow, whether, you know, in the United States or internationally, um, those opportunities grow, right? Mm -hmm. If you if you played the game in collegiately or beyond. So we will have to keep people in the game so they can continue to be more ambassadors, you know, mm-hmm. nationwide, no matter what yeah. their nationality is. Mm-hmm. Why do you think, um, so one thing I wanted to talk about, obviously we talk about the Olympic games and why it's such a big deal, but in keeping softball in the games, but what makes what makes it such an important thing for our sport? And I think we often talk about like softball should be in the Olympics, softball should be in the Olympics. You know, we deserve this, we're working participation, all this. But when when it is in the Olympic games, how does that change our sport? What is something that um, that you can like tangibly talk about? Like, hey, when softball's in the Olympic games, it the mm-hmm. trickle down effect of it. Yeah. I mean, I think the first thing that comes to mind is like the dream, you know, like it's the pinnacle of our game to be able to play on that platform. Yes. It's only 18 athletes that get to represent the country, but I think that that's what makes it so special. Right. And you are the best of the the best playing against the best of the best. And there is nothing that replicates that. Like, yes, the college level, like, my gosh, the game has grown so much. Right. And there's so much camaraderie and, you know, on any given day, any team can win. And that's just proof that our sport has grown, but that extra notch forward when the Olympics are in talks or, or an opportunity, like, it's just, it's unreal. Like it's unreal to even fathom, like I could potentially play on that stage and I could represent my country. Like there's nothing like that, that nothing like that in our game that can replicate that feeling. So I think that that's what makes it so special. I think it's that dream and that opportunity of something to reach for, something to shoot for. Um, 
that's what it means to me. I don't know. What do you think? I think, yes, everything, everything you said, but everything you said, and I would even go on to say like from an Olympic and business standpoint, I think it creates, you know, as an individual, you have those dreams, but it creates the dream in others and it creates like heroes, right? Like it creates heroines and Mm -hmm. um, name recognition and all of that. And those people, you know, become other people become excited to follow them. And then when it, you have those identifying moments, like the Olympic games, I mean, you go the women's college world series, you know, let's say, I don't don't know what their attendance is. Let's say 50,000 people in the stands, you know, maybe a hundred thousand, hundreds of thousands watching on TV to the Mm -hmm. Olympic games, you have billions, you know, Mm -hmm. billions of people watching and it creates those stories. And I think when stories are told, it creates fan engagement, it creates fan awareness and people latch on because all of a sudden they think they see it, right? They see it and they are like, oh, I could do that. Oh, I want to do that. It's possible. You know, I want to throw 75 miles an hour at the games. You know, I want to make a strikeout or you know, be the tying run or whatever it is, all those things. And it creates so it creates that those individual stories that mm-hmm. then, you know, magnify throughout the country. Yeah. You're so right. I mean, that's exactly that. And I mean, it's like the stage of the world, you know, it's um, it's just magnified times 20 times 10 when you're talking about those hero stories and following along those journeys of those different athletes like that in the Olympic movement, it, there's nothing like it. It's, it's yeah. so powerful. Like you're so right. Yeah. I just bring it, obviously, you know, it brings communities together. It brings countries mm-hmm. together, but it mm-hmm. also like the amount of investment that goes in to the economy and to like, it's just, you know, trampolines throughout our sport, you know, mm-hmm. and participation and equipment and, in in innovation like it's cool it's really cool to see Uh, I couldn't agree more so cool um so how many people do you think will actually go to the LA games you know like how many people be in attendance yes in attendance you (laughs) and it's just like the Olympics softball only softball only what uh, softball? yeah 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 well I'm just making sure I mean I feel like everybody's gonna be there well I mean I mean I don't know you how know big are they gonna need to make this stadium <sighs> yeah the stadium issue I'm curious where they will have them play if yeah that's uh, that's very valid I have no idea um but being in LA Los Angelino <laughs> can I say that <laughs> You did. Say it. <laughs> super biased. Like I'm like, we are in essentially, I don't know. Obviously, it could be argued today, but like the softball mecca of the world, you know, like Southern California has been a hotbed for softball, you know. Yeah, it's oh, definitely so like, one of the starting place. LA is definitely one of the starting areas and hotbed, you know, continues. Yeah. So I think this there. Yeah. Having softball here in essentially the softball mecca the you know the hot bed of softball I I just it's so powerful like I think to be honest there'll be a lot of people there a lot of people at the softball games and I think too a lot of travel ball teams are in this area like there's a lot of youth softball that happens in Los Angeles and I'm sure people will travel in a, you know put a number so, put a number give us a number put a number put a number um like for the softball game um gosh okay like I wish I knew what stadium we were working with but dude I'm just gonna throw out like I'm going big I'm gonna say 30,000 people are coming to the softball game <laughs> really I was thinking like 90 like could we get oh, yeah could okay we get a, could we get 100,000 people in the in that's amazing okay in an LA I softball like too big. arena I mean if the if like the women, Oklahoma City, you know, the heart Oklahoma, of the women's how many world people does How many people does Hall of Fame Stadium hold? Do oh, we know? No. I wish I you know this. Come on. I think, but they just built the upper deck, right? And like, yeah. that's only two years old. And yeah. they're already selling out the, the upper deck. Yeah. So I feel like they're right around that 25,000. Mm-hmm. 
Yeah. That's, that's my guess. Yeah. No, I definitely think that we could do go bigger and, and do more. We get that. I'm almost thinking yeah. like, what, I mean, if it was like, even at Dodger stadium, I don't know. Could, I don't know. Can they convert that field? Oh, they could, they could, they, they could. I mean, oh yeah. Anything, yeah, anything can happen. Yeah. Anything can happen with money. Uh, it's just, yeah. Like where are we playing that game? Where, where is it happening? I have, I have a lot of questions. So yeah, I think I have a lot of questions, but I think, oh, we could, I think we should, but should for sure be able to get, I don't know. I, I mean, is that, t- am I dreaming too big? Could we get, no, no I, it, it's definitely like if, it, if there pass. were a place for it to happen, LA is a place for it to happen. Like to reach for a hundred thousand people, 90, like that's huge. I I think it's a ton. I'm just, my biggest question is like, where, where is that happening? But I the price is right. Like who we need like the middle person. Yeah. Yeah. Got Uh, 90, maybe like 60. Yeah. Maybe. Yeah. I was thinking that I was, um, stretching a little bit too much with the 30, but yeah my it's where where Hmm. what do you think is the biggest crowd you played in front of how many people that's a good question mon I have no idea (laughs) I mean like I probably would say like China there was a lot of people at our games in Beijing right like that was a lot yeah um I would say either there and it's some of our games in Japan, I mean, like there's just a ton of people that would show up to our championship series and games there. I just like can't put okay. a number. I don't know the number. I'm not good. I I black out when we play, so I don't know. <laughs> <laughs> I know the feeling. I know <laughs> the Tokyo games, they were adding to, you know, Yokohama, the Yokohama Stadium. They're adding more seats, like extra mm-hmm. upper decks and stuff around the outfield. And then be, and then obviously COVID hit. So there was no one in the stands, but mm-hmm. I think they were adding to that stadium because they were expecting mm-hmm. so many, but definitely curious on what they'll do there. Cause I, I do, I do think that will, I I can't imagine. Yeah. Do you have, have, like, do you know a number of like the biggest crowd that you played in front of? Um, and if you do, like, oh. did you keep it in the spreadsheet? Like, I know, right? And go back and like tally it. I'm, now I'm curious. Oh, July first. Um, I feel like there was like a at least ten or twelve for sure. Multiple, Where multiple times? Um, the USA versus Japan series in the Tokyo Dome. I think there was like around fourteen thousand, maybe twelve thousand in there. Um, I know a, a bunch of our opening series. Um, mm-hmm. in, the Nagoya, in the Nagoya Dome, those were like 8,000, okay. 10,000 in there. So I feel like that would yeah. be solid. Yeah. My I, gauge on numbers is just like so off. Like I'd always lose at like how many marbles are in the jar? I'm like, I don't know. A lot. Like <laughs> a lot. But, well, yeah. the moment that tickets get on sale, everybody, <laughs> you know, be prepared. Yeah. <laughs> start adding, start adding extra seats to the stadium yeah so. wherever i'm just curious where but we yeah. shall see soon. we shall see i'm they've got some uh uh construction to do let's just say that mm-hmm. yeah and that's where i'm I'm wondering like our that information yeah I, do we know i haven't even i should know this but are we building are we trying to find somewhere existing um yeah yeah We'll have to look into that. Um, okay, now let's get into the funnest conversation. <laughs> yet. Okay. I mean, not too much detail, but um, what do you think USA has got to do to got to do to win to be a successful event? What are what do you think? Like just like kind of some fun <laughs> strategy. Like, well, my initial thought is you've got to come out of retirement. That's you know that's got to happen first. Yeah, you could do it uh gosh what What, has happened one thing I kind of thought about is like you know the U.S. has always been known for like speed and then you know home run hitting right Mm -hmm. but I always you know our dirt fields right they're so hard like the ground is so hard like wouldn't it make sense to like just make the ground as hard as possible so that you could 
you know, we like bring our slap game and everything. Whereas in Japan, in Japan, we played on turf and like there, we would have these slappers up and they're like candy corn hops to the shortstop every <laughs> time. Like, of course our slappers, like, you yeah. know, the girls like no offense, Japan's great at defense and all yeah. of that, but like the turf did not play in their favor. Yeah. Offensively. Let's go. So. I'm for it. Let's go. I'm like, Let's, I'm the like trying to build an army of little slap hitters. So like, let's go. Yeah. Well, I'm here gotta, for it. First, we got to figure out what kind of field it is. <laughs> yeah, that would matter. I don't know. I mean, I just, I think, I mean, obviously we're, you know, like immediately we're thinking about Japan. Like that's probably yeah. the biggest rival in Canada. I mean, as of late Canada too. I mean, I think that you've got, you can't sleep on them, but so for us, for us, for us, we're playing again, but for the U S to win, I really think pitching the pitching staff has to be so important, you know, like, and I think that like, yeah, I agree with you. Like our offense has been probably the thing that gets us forward in the past, but as of late, I think that they have caught up to us in the sense of like offense, like offense for offense. So like where we really have to like go above and beyond is like that pitcher duel, like, you know, you think about the Fernandez days and, um, you know, like you and Kat, like we just, we really have to have a superb pitching staff like that, just in, you know, using them effectively. Like we can't, I think long gone are the days of like riding one arm. And I, I think that that, like that, we're seeing that in our college game. Right. And I think that even too internationally, like when you think about Japan, like they've caught up to us offensively where they can handle speed and movement and things of that nature. So keeping them off balance and having different looks with different pitchers. I really think the pitching staff is going to have to be key. Yeah. What do you I, de- I definitely think the pitching staff needs to like, you know, step up for sure. Um, a little bit more roles. Yeah. Established roles within the pitching staff would be huge. Um, and just better, better competition, better preparation going into the Olympic games, I think. And that's going to be huge and playing a little offense and a little bit of defense leading up to the Olympic games would be big, right? Like, um, you want to, how are we got to develop these girls even more, like take them to the next level that is post-college, you know, what, and, and honestly, not just being a pro, what does it take to be the best pro like that mm-hmm. there's a difference between you know being the best in college that you get drafted to play pro or go to another team you know play internationally whatever be on team usa to hey like maintaining and being at the top level of mm-hmm. of a pro, the top pro and you know mm-hmm. consistently winning and winning at that level monica i think you just hit it hit it on the head in the sense of like that's really the biggest thing that we are lacking when we talk about Japan like they're playing at a pro level and playing at that high best of best pro level year round we are lacking that (laughs) and so like that is where their preparation comes is like they are playing on teams in high level competition throughout the entire year where we let's just you know like and it's no shade. It's just being the obvious facts, you know, like our, we've got our AU, we've got, you know, the WPF and like, those are just like little like spots and yeah, pockets, blurb, of you know, like we have yet to figure out this pro system. And I think that that is going to be the thing that's going to support our national team. Like those 18 athletes that get picked, like if they're playing the best of the best in this environment, that's mocked like a college environment, but that's that next level, next tier up of being a pro. Like that, I think is a little bit deeper of actually like, you know, obviously the athletes that are chosen in in, in what are the things that need to be done, but like our team, like I couldn't agree more. I'm just echoing what you're saying, but in a a different branch, like just being developed and pushed the next three to four years at this high functioning level, like, it's that's the, where that's where we're lacking, right? Yeah, I think it's the developing the high functional athlete, the high intensity athlete, the high, you know, 
Mm -hmm. clutch athlete, high performance, stressful situation, clutch performing athlete. Like Mm -hmm. that's where we're lacking and it's developing, not just the softball skills, not just, you know, those things it's adding the mental piece and it's not talking about mental game, it's strategy and those girls executing things in those situations. Um, all of those pieces together, it's the heart, it's the mental, the actual mental game. It's the, um, preparation piece. It's the timing of things and it's the strategy of it. You know, I think all those have to come together. Agree. Agree. Yeah. I mean, I, that pro piece is a huge gap I see, um, for, us, the U S you know, like, it's just, yeah, we gotta, we gotta figure that out. And I don't know if we get it done in the next four years, but honestly, like, I think that that's where Japan has prevailed and we've been in it. We've seen it, you know, we, yeah. we see how the training year round, it's not yeah. just <laughs> for, yeah, the- for sure, for mm-hmm. sure. Definitely. You know, um, but you know, Japan's not the only country, of course there'll be, you know, I probably what six spots available. Mm-hmm. Mm -hmm. um for teams and I think every country is improving you know Italy had to put together a really good team in Tokyo obviously Mexico had their first Mm -hmm. there last year Canada um Mm -hmm. continues to show up well um yeah yeah so and I think you know even if we're watching some of the WBSC and some of those games as we come into world championships and world cups, you know, there's some up and coming countries as well. I think great Britain's one of them, you know, so there's, there's teams out there that are being competitive. So it'll be definitely interesting to see who those final six, those final Olympic teams are. Yeah. Oh man. Well, I just got like the chills and they got a little bit like nervous at the same time. Like just, I guess it's more excitement. Like, it's exciting it's exciting to see how it all comes together in all the different countries and who gets to represent the USA you know like we definitely and like and we say all that I still obviously truly believe like we have the best talent here no bad no no oh, hands yeah. in, you know what I mean so it's like For it's sure. just that, that talent yeah managed in the right way right athletes being chosen being developed and so hey I'm yeah. USA today, so yeah I completely agree I think we have some of the best talent in the world in the U.S. Um, it's just a manage man manner of harnessing it right um, which is cool it's exciting it's I'm excited already for LA 2028 um, so excited for the opportunity for the U.S. to host and for um us to be back on the Olympic stage and for these young women playing now uh, to have that opportunity to potentially represent their country. And I can't wait um, to see you guys all duke it out for those, those 15 to 18 spots. So um, Tosh, what do you have going up, going on? Anything you want to add on things you have on your plate coming up? Girl so much i'm like raising little miss carter um that's a big part um the in you know I, I guess i didn't say in the beginning but the foundation that's been what's keeping me busy every single day um we have our cocktail fundraiser coming up in november come on out if you're in the la area that would be great to see you yes. um but like you know just i feel so lucky that you know and I'm speaking for you, but that we get to stay in the game. Like we get to stay in the game. We get to be around it. Um, Yeah. We just get to be a part of something that changed our lives and, you know, brought so much joy and and fulfillment. And so like to be able to, you know, any of the lanes that we get to choose, whether it be coaching, whether it be just motivating, being in front of an athlete or, yeah, you know, supporting an athlete in some way or fashion. Like it's, it's truly an honor and I feel so freaking lucky every single day that I still get to be in the game. Yeah. So well said, I think, you know, being able to, as a young girl fall in love with the sport, but then as a, as a woman being able to just give back to the sport and keep it in your life and, 
um, empower others to have those opportunities is just um, just incredible. So looking forward to our next talk, our next chat. Hope you guys like it. Feel free to comment below if there's a topic that you want us to talk about it. Yeah. See you guys. Thanks, Mon.